Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the workshop. It's a pleasure to have you here. I hope you're having a fantastic day. Today, we still indeed have our guest from Minnesota, the t-shirt competition winner, Mike, who's wearing all his ice hockey gear, which is, which is great, but it's great having you here, Mike. We're gonna make some fun stuff today. Thanks for joining us, and uh, I hope you enjoy. So, among some other things, yesterday we uh, kept working on the Damascus steel, and I wanna see what the pattern looks like, I think, the pattern's gonna look rather incredible. As you'll remember, we actually tried something completely new, and this is the thrill. Mike's a hobbyist blacksmith, and he's been watching my videos, and he had some ideas of what he wanted to do himself to the pattern, which is super duper exciting, and we're now gonna reveal it by making a cut on the bandsaw, and then giving it a little bit of an edge. I'm gonna do the honors, give it a little bit of a test edge. Oh my goodness! That pattern is unbelievable. That is beautiful. Big props to Mike on uh, wanting to get creative with the pattern. It has paid off. That little tiny piece of steel looks incredible. Yeah. Right, Mike, I, I, I have a proposition for you. It is Sunday and you're leaving tomorrow and uh, the time that we have left is somewhat on the, uh, on the short side of things. Right. Making an ice hockey blade that we can then mount to a stick is gonna, it, it's, it's, it's gonna take us like 30 hours. What do you think about making a Damascus puck from that billet? Sounds good? Sounds like a good idea. Okay, great, so the video title from two days ago is completely redundant. We're no longer making a Damascus steel ice hockey blade, we're making a puck, and uh, yeah, we'll, we'll just continue the video. So now we're gonna give it a test etch again, and Mike, you can do the honors for the second time today. Man, this is gonna be the coolest, and I mean the coolest ice hockey puck ever. Yeah. That pattern is beautiful. So here is what I want us to do, Mike. I want us to now have a look at the pattern and see which is the way that we like it oriented best. I'll show you what I think we're gonna like best. Here's what I think we're gonna like best in terms of the orientation. But one thing we gotta bear in mind is that these pieces aren't perfectly square. They're just a touch rectangular. So just gotta double check. Yeah, they're gonna work just beautifully like that. I think it's gonna look like some sort of a, almost like an explosion, because you have these little undulations coming all the way around. Happy with that? Yeah. Right. So, we spent a lot of time cleaning this up and making sure that everything's square, it's all the same height, and the reason for it is, the issue that we had earlier, before we, we couldn't make a puck from what we had because it was too small, and we couldn't upset it all the other way because that would have been an extreme upset. It would have been a five to one upset, which isn't any fun. However, what we've done is we've cut it up, boom, we got a nice big block of steel like this, and I want it as clean as possible and as square as possible so we get a good weld in as few hits as possible so we don't get too far away from the shape of a puck, which is a very short and squatty thing, right? So, when it comes to welding this, we're not gonna weld on the ends, we're only gonna weld on the sides because I don't wanna have to take off too much material on the ends because that's where our good pattern is. So we're gonna make sure that we clamp it all together as tight as possible and we're gonna TIG weld down the sides we don't really mind too much about removing material from the sides of this once it's said and done. Then it's gonna go back in the forge, and it's gonna be a case of forge welding it without holding on to anything, which is tough. I might end up doing a little more of that forge welding than you, because I'm a little more used to the tongs, but uh, that is why we took all that extra effort in tidying up those pieces before the forge welding. <laughs>
that is now all welded together, and this time I went fluxless. Now, it was several months ago that Rad Knives on Instagram sent me a message and let me know, hey, you know, you can give welding without flux a try. And you guys have seen over the, the past couple of months, I've done flux, I've done no flux, I've sometimes said, oh, gonna flux it just in case. I sometimes said, you know, oh, I'm not gonna flux it, it doesn't need it. Uh, what is it that makes me have those decisions? I'm not entirely sure. What I know for sure was that today, that was all super duper clean. It was welded together, TIG welded on the sides, so nice and tight. It just felt like the perfect opportunity to not use flux, so, uh, thanks, so thanks Rad for that. That's a, a Rad suggestion, but now, We've actually pulled it out of the fire. We have plenty of material. So we're gonna cut off a slice that Mike can then forge a belt buckle out of. The rest is gonna be made into the pug, but remember yesterday we started working on hammers. We're gonna continue working on hammers today. And now there's no touch marks on there. There's no markings on it. And Mike doesn't have any names for his twins yet. On the hammers, he's wearing the t-shirt that won in the contest. On the hammers that he made, that was also part of him winning the contest, you wrote twin A yeah. and twin B. Do you still want to do that? Sure. Sound good? So what we've got, we've got these cold pieces. We're gonna warm them up just ever so slightly, just to a dull red. That way it's not oxidizing, it's not scaling. We keep everything nice and clean and pretty. And now we're gonna stamp in the touch marks as well as twin A and uh, twin B. the hammers. This, of course, is that fabulous piece of Damascus steel that we're working on, but the interesting thing about this is indeed the fact that there's no way we're going to be able to fit that in the saw. So what we're going to do is we are going to do a couple of tack welds to this piece so then we can grip this main flat bar in the band saw, and then we'll cut off our slice for the belt buckle and forge the rest into a puck. Mike can take those tongs. I'll take these tongs. Mike is going to forge his ice hockey puck from that piece and I'm gonna forge him out a thin belt buckle from this so into the fire we go Whoa. nice throw Mike
the ice hockey puck and the belt buckle are indeed forged. Mike, in a little bit, once the ice hockey puck has cooled down enough, is going to start grinding on it. But while it is cooling down, of course, I'm, uh, I'm putting my, uh, my space suit on. I am going to start grinding the hammers that we finished forging, getting those ready to be finished. So Mike has just sanded this and he was using this granite block as, uh, as a surface to sand upon and we just noticed the most amazing thing ever, this thing... Uh, 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 just practicing my dangles. Anyway, we just noticed that it, that it slides pretty well, which I guess is indicative of it being uh, being nice and flat. There's also a nice uh, suction that's created from it. It's cool. Well, anyway, now it is time for the etch. He has it uh, sanded up to the 400 grit, so we're going to be going into the ferric chloride. It is starting to get pretty late here, so we're going to have to start hustling. I'm going to harden the hammers. I don't know if I'm going to have finished the hammers by the time you leave, you know, either which way. I've got a lot of stuff to ship to you because because the merch I had for you hasn't arrived yet. So it's not the end of the world if I've got to finish the hammers another day. Day, but we're going into the etch with the puck right now. Mike has polished it. It is looking fantastic. The ferric chloride is there. We are ready to go in. Let's do it. Holy moly. We couldn't resist having a sneak peek. That is unbelievable. Let's see the other side. Oh my goodness. Mike. This is pretty sweet. Oh yeah. So now it's time for some 2000 grit polishing. Let's get to it. That's water, by the way. So we didn't do the coffee trick on this today, which supposedly leaves a lot of contrast. This is just kind of straight out of the acid into the water. Contrast actually looks pretty good. I don't, I don't have any major complaints with that. Oh yeah. That is... That's a puck. That's a puck and a half. That is a puck and a half. <laughs>
Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching these fantastic three days. Mike, thank you so much for coming. Thank, thank, thank you, you for buying the t-shirt. Congratulations for the twins that helped get you this. I'm so pleased. I'm going to finish off these hammers and mail them to him. Your Damascus steel hockey puck. Oh my goodness, that thing is so beautiful. The pattern on it is out of this world. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching. I sincerely hope that you've enjoyed yourself. Mike, coming all the way from Minnesota, you're a boss. Thank you guys for watching. I've said that twice, but seriously, thank you for watching and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.